What's up, general organic and biochemistry students? So today we're going to start lipids. So let's jump right in. So what are lipids? So lipids, by definition, are going to be water-insoluble biochemical compounds. So we can break this up into several different categories. So this is going to include fatty acids, waxes, triglycerides, glycerophospholipids, phospho-sphingolipids, glycolipids, steroids, eicosanoids, and lipoproteins. Okay, so let's start with fatty acids. So what is a fatty acid? A fatty acid is just going to be a really long carboxylic acid. So we're talking 12 to 20 carbon atoms in length, and this is typically an even number it's very rare to see fatty acids with an odd number of carbon atoms. So I want you to look at the structure of this fatty acid here. So notice we have our carboxylic acid head, which is gonna be very polar, it's going to be hydrophilic, gonna be able to interact really well with water. And then we have this long hydrocarbon tail. So this long hydrocarbon tail is going to be very hydrophobic, it's going to be nonpolar, and it's not going to be able to react or interact with water very well. So when we talk about fatty acids, we often talk about saturation. So a saturated hydrocarbon or a saturated fatty acid is just gonna be one that is made up of nothing but carbon-carbon single bonds. So we're still gonna have this carbon-oxygen double bond, we're still gonna have that carbonyl group, but all of the carbon-carbon bonds in the fatty acid tail are going to be single bonds. So if you have nothing but single bonds in the fatty acid tail, that means they're going to be saturated with the maximum amount of hydrogens. So what is an unsaturated hydrocarbon then? So an unsaturated hydrocarbon is just going to be the opposite of that. It's gonna be a fatty acid or a hydrocarbon with at least one carbon-carbon double bond or triple bond. And you'll often see these broken down into monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids. So a monounsaturated means there's only one double bond. A polyunsaturated means you can have multiple double bonds. Okay, so at the beginning of this course, we talked a little bit about geometric isomers. So in case you don't remember, a geometric isomer is a subset of stereoisomer that exists because of restricted bond rotation. So we saw this with double bonds, and we saw this with cyclic alkanes. So like we talked about in the last slide, a lot of these fatty acids are going to have double bonds in the tail. So that means they can exist as the cis isomer or as the trans isomer. So fatty acids in nature are almost always going to exist as the cis isomer. So let's talk a little bit about physical properties. So fatty acids, by definition, are insoluble biomolecules. And we talked a little bit about ways that we can affect the solubility of carboxylic acids in Chapter 8. So one of the ways that we can affect the solubility of a carboxylic acid is by deprotonating it. So by turning a carboxylic acid into a carboxylate ion. So that's going to increase the water solubility when we do that because we're making it more polar. We're adding a full negative charge to that molecule. So let's take a deprotonated fatty acid chain. So the longer it gets, the less soluble it's going to get. Why is that? Well, this is just like any other hydrocarbon that we talked about earlier. The longer that carbon chain is going to get, the more and more of that molecule is going to be hydrophobic. So smaller and smaller percentage of the surface area of that molecule is going to be polar and be able to interact with the surrounding water. So as we keep adding carbons to that chain, it's going to get more and more nonpolar and it's not going to be able to interact with the water as well. It's going to clump together and it's going to come out of solution. So the other way we talked about altering the solubility of a carboxylic acid was to turn it into a salt. So let's try an example with benzoic acid. Let's react benzoic acid with sodium hydroxide and draw the product. And then let's talk about how that can change its solubility. 
Okay, so start by drawing our aromatic ring. Add a carbon, oxygen, and our OH. And now we're gonna react that with sodium hydroxide. And this is just an acid-base neutralization reaction, so our products are gonna be a salt, and we're gonna get water. So here's our water. Where's that water gonna come from? We've got the OH from the sodium hydroxide, and our acidic hydrogen on our benzoic acid. So our salt, it's going to be the ionic compound that results from this neutralization reaction. So we have benzoate and a sodium ion. So there's our sodium benzoate salt. Okay, so how does this affect solubility? So I don't want you to memorize these values, but benzoic acid has a solubility of around 3.4 grams per liter. Sodium benzoate, our salt, has a solubility of 628 grams per liter. So by turning this into a salt, we're gonna increase the solubility almost 200 fold. Okay, so what about melting points? So when we talked about the melting point of hydrocarbons, we talked about a very weak interaction, but it was a very important interaction because it's additive. And this interaction is the same one that's important for holding fatty acetals together, and that is the London dispersion force. So how does the length of a fatty acid affect its melting point? So basically, the longer the carbon chain, the more surface area that's going to come into contact between two different fatty acid molecules those one interactions are going to be additive, so that's going to result in a higher melting point. So one other way we can affect melting point is with saturation. So here we have five different 18 carbon fatty acids. And let's look at the melting point of each of these. So let's start at the top here with the fatty acid that's found in lard. So this is an 18 carbon saturated fatty acids. So we have nothing but carbon-carbon single bonds in the fatty acid tail. So this is going to have a melting point of around 69 degrees Celsius. So our next one is one of the fatty acids found in hydrogenated oil. So this is a trans fat. So we've added a trans double bond and that's going to get us to a 45 degrees Celsius melting point. Okay, now let's look at the major fatty acid in olive oil. So here we have a cis double bond right in the middle of the chain, and that's gonna drastically lower our melting point to 13 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's take a look at safflower oil. Now we have two double bonds, both cis in our chain. That's going to give us a melting point of negative nine Celsius. And then finally, we have a fatty acid with three cis double bonds in it. This is what's found in hemp seed or flaxseed oil. Now we have a negative 17 degrees Celsius melting point. So why do we see such a difference? So we have a range of negative 17 all the way to 69 Celsius for the melting point of five different fatty acids that all have the same number of carbons. So why are these so drastically different? Well, a lot of these double bonds are going to put kinks into these fatty acid chains. So they're not going to be able to pack together as tightly. So they're going to have less surface area interacting. So the less surface area we have interacting, the less London dispersion forces we can make, and that's going to give us a lower melting point. So basically the more kinks in the chain, the harder it is for them to pack together, the less surface area they have, the lower the melting point. Okay, so which one of these are liquid at room temperature? So room temperature in Celsius is going to be somewhere in the 22 to 25 degree range. So which ones are going to be solid? Which ones are going to be liquid? So all three of our fatty acids with cis double bonds 
have a melting point lower than room temperature. So that means they're all going to be liquid. And our other two have a melting point above room temperature. So they're going to be solid at room temperature. So which of these are omega-3 fatty acids? So if you remember from chapter eight, when we first talked about carboxylic acids, we always started numbering them from the carboxylic acid head. So from the carbonyl carbon, the carbonyl carbon was always carbon number one. So omega is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. So that means we're going to start counting from the last carbon instead. So we're going to start counting from the carbon carbon tail. So looking at oleic acid here, if we start counting from the end, we have carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our double bond is between carbons nine and 10. So that would be an omega nine fatty acid. So if we try the same thing here with hemp seed oil, we have carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, our double bond is between carbons three and four. So hemp seed, flaxseed, those would be omega-3 fatty acids.